Good evening. My name is Fred Melman. This is my, this is my lovely, lovely wife, wife Eileen Melman. Welcome. Welcome. And, um, and um, I have a presentation, have a presentation I'd like to present as part of new business to the Board of Supplies. I have a handout. I was going to pass it out. No, hold on to those until we hear what your request is. Okay. The request is that um, I'd like to make the selectmen aware of a parking situation that exists on our neighbor, neighbor's yard right across the street um, from our house. It's an unsightly uh, school bus that's parked horizontally in the yard. And um, it's right in front of our yard. We're on the opposite side of the street. And I have several photos in here that I'd like to show. Um, What's your address? Did you five, say it? My address is 5 Dartmouth Street, Danvers, Mass. And the um, vehicle that's parked on the other side of the street is 29 Trinity Street. Is this, do you feel, violating an ordinance? The ordinance does not have any restrictions. I've talked to Rich Maloney, but I've done a lot of research on this, and I'd like to at least present it to the committee. And I've talked to Mr. Bartha about this right around Thanksgiving, and I think I have reasonable cause um, to present this to the Board of Selectmen. You may present the pictures to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Somebody's hobby? Again, I just gave you a short synopsis of the fact that this vehicle um, that's parked across the street, I believe, is infringing on our property, and that uh, I'd like to see the town council at least um, try and take a look at this and consider maybe changing the town <coughs> ordinance. I've done a lot of work on this. I'll, I'll be going through the background in a second. But first, I'd like to call your attention to these photos so you can understand what I'm be talking about. Um, the first photo on the left hand side of this packet. The first photo is the school bus, so called school bus, um, what she's going to convert to a camper. Um, this bus has been on this property for about six months now and has only been moved once. Does it have license plates? Yes. Okay, I talked you. to Mr. Maloney about this several months ago. And uh, it was originally um, registered to the son who does not live at that property. He lives in Salem. And Mr. Maloney um, had the a demand notice um, sent to them. Uh, and the property was re-registered in the mother's name. And the property, is, it, this school bus has been parked there since June. Um, as I showed you, this is the front yard photo of the school bus that faces the front of our house. The second one is the coming up Dartmouth Street, shows the front of the school bus. And the third one is the rear end of the, of the uh, school bus as you're coming up to, from Princeton Street up Dartmouth Street. The next photo is a picture of my house at 5 Dartmouth Street. You can see it's the front up front their faces that school bus. And the last photo, which I'll be getting into, is the school bus, but you see over on the side that there's a driveway and a garage there uh, where the blue top is. And I'll get to that later. Thank you. Um, so just, um, you're gonna ask us for some resolution tonight. You're not gonna get it because it's new business. This is a big packet. I'm not even gonna try to read it I'm going to take it home and read it. I'll discuss it with the town manager, building inspector, police department. And if there's any violations, we can react to that. I've got a write-up here. It's only a short write-up. 
couple pages? No, sir. We're going to take it home and read it. Okay. If you had given this to us prior to the meeting, we could have had time to digest it. We get our packets on Fridays. I wasn't told that. I it's went to okay. The I'm just I'm telling you so you understand. Yeah. We get our packets on Friday. On Thursdays, the Utah manager I approved the agenda. We get our packets on Friday. We spend whatever portion of the weekend of our time okay. to review them. And then we come in here able to react to everything on the agenda in a timely professional manner. You have an issue, and I'm, I understand it's an issue for you. I want to know, though, from the town manager, the building inspector, the police department, are there any violations? Okay. Okay, and, and we will get back to you with anything that we find, and if we need additional information from you, you're welcome to be on the agenda the next meeting. One of the things, one of the things I'd like to add <coughs> yes, is that behind this write-up that I did on the background and everything, um, I did a survey on my own of all the surrounding communities around here, and I found that several several of them had um, no front yard parking restrictions, and a bunch of them had special permits. I took the time to do about 15 communities, and I have all the backup behind that, so I would appreciate it if that get looked at also. I will look at that. Um, we don't allow vehicles to block sidewalks. Front yard parking, I can't respond to. Um, you can't leave an abandoned vehicle on the property for more than 30 days without a plate. So I think we'll see how your issue fits into the regulations we have. Back allowance from the house, Chief. There may be, yes. Mr. Milliman and I did meet, and I think um, I'm familiar enough with the issue. We can review it. I think we'll want to have Rich Maloney here. There are some solutions to his concern, um, but it would involve a, a discussion of the board at some point with all the facts. So I think we can come, we can bring this back, and we'll let Mr. Milliman know when it's going to be back right. before the board. Yep, thank you. We, we will thank look into much. it. We will get the facts, and we will get back to you. Okay. Thank all right. you. And, but thank you for the detailed information. Yeah, very nice. Thank yep. you. Good work. Okay. Anyone else with new business? It's the Bride Street. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Bill Brad Street, town meeting member, precinct one. We have a special town meeting coming up shortly. One of the articles is Article Four, deals with the land swap. And it says in the uh, article explanation, back in June of 1986. The swap was supposed to have been cleared up, taken care of, done whatever, however it's done. <coughs> That's 86. It's now 2020. Are there any other uncompleted warrants that we should be looking at and getting them bundled up and taken care of so we're not looking at 18 things for the next warrant article or a special town meeting might only be two or three. Uh, just a question. So you want us to see how many other skeletons there are in the closet? Good choice of words. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I can promise you there are others. Yes. But I would also, <laughs> you don't need to worry about 20 of them emerging because it took 40 some odd years for this. <coughs> I won't be here to question you. So. Is that when we finally own all the streets? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to, we're going to take um, nobody else new business. Oh, thank you. We're going to take the agenda out of order. We're going to go to number eight. The board will read a <coughs> proclamation in recognition of the 175th anniversary of the Maple Street Congregationalist Church on January 26, 2020. Is somebody here to accept it? Please introduce yourself for the folks yes, at home. Uh, Priscilla Curta. Member Welcome. of the Maple Street Church, longtime member of Maple Street Church, and uh, I thank you very much for doing this and uh, in honor of our 175th anniversary. I just thought I would add a couple of things, not take up too much of a time, but the Maple Street Church, Congregational Church, uh, was founded in the spring of 1844 by a group of 42 members from the Highlands First Church in the Highlands. We were actually dismissed because of our stand on slavery and uh, considered abolitionist. And they met, actually, if you ever think of the downtown right across the street from Maple Street Church is a yellow house next to the pizza place, and that's where they met uh, in that living room there, right there. 
And then um, on January 22nd, 1845, 66 men and women gathered to hear the dedication sermon of the Reverend Richard Tolman in the, in the church that they built there. And it was originally called the Third Orthodox Congregational Church. They built the first three churches on the property across the street, and you know, two of them burned. And the third one, I'm sure you remember, in 1944, when the church burned to the ground and uh, uh, it was rebuilt. Uh, just a little note here, uh, my dad, Harold Wheeler, uh, heard that the church was burning, realized it, got us out of bed, got us down there. And I actually, I was very young, of course, and uh, watched the church burn down. Very, very sad occasion. And two of the things they saved, which we use to this day, the baptismal font in our silver communion service. So, to look at the church. Right, thank you very much for that. Thank I you. want to ask Selectman Clark to read the proclamation. Town of Danvers proclamation, whereas the Maple Street Church of Danvers is celebrating its 175th anniversary and whereas the church's congregation strives to uphold its core values by supporting activities and programs throughout the year, and whereas their work in Danvers includes support of the Danvers Food Pantry, Danvers Council on Aging, local boy and girl scout troops, and the uh, Danvers Committee on Human Rights and Inclusion, to name a few, and whereas their Earth Stewards Initiative was instrumental in the town of Danvers adopting a plastic bag bylaw, and whereas their sponsorship and the uh, effort of many businesses and merchants to help the town purchase the Hope Street parking lot for use by the community has made downtown Danvers more accessible for all. Therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Danvers, do hereby congratulate the Maple Street Church on the celebration of their 175th anniversary and wish them continued success in their many endeavors throughout the community and beyond. Second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Priscilla, stay right there. We're going to get two more signatures, and I'll bring this down to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate and it. Maybe, maybe uh, Assistant Town Manager will take a picture. Oh. I see you're sitting there. <laughs> there is this photo op, Dan? Yes, it is. <laughs> you're not running for re-election this year. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am. I'm not, I know I'm you not are. Oh, you, you are going to run? Have <laughs> <laughs> that back, please. See. I'm not up for election this year either. <laughs> <coughs> How many years you been a town meeting member, Priscilla? Uh, it's going close to 40. Oh, you're going to get you up on that plaque if you just I hang think, in there. I think my name is up there somewhere now. But some time ago they listed the names, yeah. So do we get to make comments? I'm going to guess Priscilla has somebody else she wants in that photo. Oh, now I'm in it. <laughs> Make faces. I don't do pictures. It's my rule in life. Good. Any, any, I'm not in it? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> that way there, no one can ever say where I was. We all going to get to make It's comments? not like you're not on camera mm -hmm. the whole time. <laughs> Anybody have any comments to make? Or? I would like to. If I yeah, no, please. So, Maple Street Church, um, you know, I'm happy for, I don't know if you call it your success, I guess it's somewhat success to keep a congregation going these days, but mostly how, what you do for the community, um, you're very involved, um, you know, besides your bean suppers and everything else you run, and a lot of your charity work and that beautiful totem pole that I still like to read, um, I haven't got it memorized yet, but, uh, you, you know, you were big on uh, helping us with the parking lot, which is beyond, you know, Townwide stuff that's more right here helping the every taxpayer in Danvers and I also know you're on my agenda Thursday night for the rail trail committee and um, But you always do everything with with such a nice attitude and never argumentative And I think that says a lot for your organization your board and the people that uh, worship there So thank you to Maple Street Church. Thank you, and I know Priscilla There's 13 ladies waiting for her so they can start their book club meeting what book? <laughs> At least, what's the book? I'm always looking for a good book. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. Um, I believe there's somebody here from the Y. Ah, the board will consider the application of the Danvers YMCA 34 Pickering Street 
you're not Suzanne. For Suzanne the, is the manager for the one day all alcoholic beverage license on Saturday, February 1, 2027 to 12. <coughs> or reach for the Star <coughs> Dinner and Dance annual event. Are you st standing in for Suzanne? Yes. Go to the microphone, introduce yourself, please, John. Up there, tell us what it is you want to do. Uh, so February 1st, we're getting ready for our big event. It's our big fundraiser. Everybody's invited, you know. It's uh, probably about 200 guests that will end up showing up. But uh, uh, we're looking for a liquor license for the day, uh, for the night. And, um, and I believe it's $50, which I brought a check and stuff like that. Good. All right. Any questions, Bill? Could he identify himself as a presenter to our committee? The gentleman? Did he introduce himself? No, yeah, because he didn't. Uh, I don't I, know. Did you introduce yourself, John? What is it? Did you introduce yourself to the oh, people I'm sorry. at home? John Soames, I'm the CEO of the uh, Danvers Community Thank YMCA. Thank you. Okay, Bill, any questions? No. No. Oh, Gardner? Uh, who will be doing the serving, and are they tip certified? Uh, Daniela's. Uh, they'll be there, and they're, they're tip certified, and they, they filled out all the paperwork as well. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Daniela. Diane? No, I'm all set. Thank you. David? Thank you. I can vouch for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not serving. <laughs> no questions. So all hands. the paperwork's in order, Mr. Clerk? As soon as you get all the, the check? All the paperwork is in order once we can see what's the, the check. <laughs> I move that we accept the application you, as presented. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, John. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Good night. We'll go back to the uh, regular agenda in order. A public hearing will be held under Chapter 138 of the General Laws on the application of GMRI, Inc., doing business as the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, 153 Andover Street. Yvonne Schleiler, manager for a change of manager at that location. Is everything in order, Mr. Clerk? Mr. Chairman, everything is in order. Somebody here to speak to this? Please go to the microphone. Introduce yourself. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Yvonne Schleier. I'm the new general manager at the Olive Garden here in Danvers, Massachusetts. Welcome to Danvers. Thank you. So we're, we're just changing the manager at that location. That is correct. Yes. And you're the and you're the new manager. Correct. Okay. We'll open up to questions, Gardner. No, the two questions I commonly ask are how often you'll be at the restaurant and if you're tip certified and your application indicates. 40 plus hours and you are tip certified. That is Coming correct. Up, I'm all set. Thank you. You're Diane? Right. No, thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. David? <coughs> questions. Good luck. Welcome. Thank Phil. you very much. Good luck. What's the will of the board? Move to uh, approve. Second. Discussion? Uh, Aaron? We've uh, got we to close the public oh, hearing. Oh, I'm first. sorry. Uh, <laughs> Move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Uh, did you ask anybody in the public? No, I didn't. Have. Was there anybody in the public that wanted to speak? Please no. Stop. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Now the motion. Will we accept the application as presented? Was there a second? Second. second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. You were just such a good person. We wanted to move you right along. That's all. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Please come on in. <laughs> thank you, you too. A public hearing will be held under Chapter 138 of the General Laws in the application of 99 West LLC, DBA 99 Restaurant and Pub 60 Commonwealth Ave. Brett Zimmerman, manager for a change of offices and change of beneficial interests in connection with an all alcoholic license at that location. Is everything in order, Mr. Clerk? Mr. Chairman. Did you read all that? <laughs> all set. Thank you. My purpose in life is to make uh, Mr. Collins have to read very thick things, uh, but uh, uh, good evening. My name is Joe Devlin. I'm an attorney with offices in uh, Newburyport in Boston, and uh, I represent the 99 restaurants here before you with largely uh, corporate housekeeping matters. The first, especially so, it's a change of officer at their corporate headquarters in Nashville. Two are out and, uh, uh, excuse me, three are out and two are in. Um, it, Main this part of their this the 99 is now is still largely run out of Woburn uh, by Charlie Noyes, but uh, they have another corporate office for the larger company in Nashville, and that's where these two new gentlemen reside. Uh, but the concept president is Charlie Noyes, and he's been <coughs> the company for probably 30 years, and he remains the same. Um, a little more 
uh, not confusing, but uh, there's been an ownership change. All the entities are the same, uh, but th there was a publicly traded company that owned a majority of the, the uh, company. And now they own even more of the company. They're almost at 90%. Um, and that then diminished the other three or four entities that also had an ownership in it. So now those four own less than 10% combined. I am going to probably preview coming attractions for you. I bet you I'm here in a year or two where the publicly traded company finally takes over 100% of it. So what's this mean for the location in Danvers? Nothing is changing. Um, if you went and asked them right now, they wouldn't even know that this was happening probably. <coughs> Okay. Questions, David? Nothing. Thank you. Diane? Uh, no. All set. Thank you. God, no. I'm all set. And Bill? I'm all set. All right. This is a public hearing. Anybody on the public have any comments? Hearing none. <coughs> I move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We're I move to the accept the application as presented. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you again. I'll nice see you, see you later, I'm sure. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm yes. related to the applicant. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, we're often approached to do corporate level changes that do not affect the local entity. Is this something that requires it to come before the selectman, or is this a, one of the duties we might be able to have the clerk handle if there's no substantive change to the local business, where it's a corporate entity or an officer of the of the corporation change. We have in the past allowed the uh, uh, clerk some latitude on other uh, duties of the, uh, that the selectmen have. I don't know if this is legally they have to do that or you have to have a lawyer come, you have to represent them and do all this other work. Joe, <coughs> make a comment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as far as I'm concerned, the ABCC requires a public okay. hearing and requires your original signatures, so I think that's the answer that all right. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Number five, a public hearing will be held under Chapter 138 of the General Laws in the application of TGI Fridays, Inc., DBA TGI Fridays, 49 Newberry Street, John Savage, manager for a change of offices and a corporate transfer of license in connection with an all alcohol license at that location. Is everything on order, Mr. Clerk? Chairman, that binder, thick binder in front of me is uh, all pertaining to this application. Okay. <coughs> so are we doing this because the stock market is so great, people are buying everybody out? <laughs> uh, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you all again. Now, my name is Albert DiNapoli. I represent TGI Fridays. Approximately uh, four years ago, uh, TGI Fridays Corporate uh, that's based in Dallas, Texas, uh, sold East Coast uh, stores that it operated to an entity down in Florida called Gold Coast. Uh, they incorporated up in Massachusetts in uh, Gold Coast of uh, Boston Fridays, LLC. Um, over the last year, uh, Fridays has repurchased uh, those East Coast entities back from Gold Coast, and Gold Coast has sold them. So basically, things are reverting back to the original TGI Fridays that owned all the TGI Fridays uh, in the East Coast, including those 19 in Massachusetts and the one in Danvers. Uh, so this is a um, application for transfer uh, back from uh, Gold Coast to TGI Fridays uh, and approval of new officers and directors because in the meantime, in those four years, there have been some changes in the corporate structure of corporate TGI Fridays. So the new officers and directors, I have provided you the uh, personal information, the core reforms for them. Uh, because this is a, a multi-unit change, if you will, um, I have sent a template of this up to the ABCC for them to review the application to make sure it was con conformity with everything that they needed. Um, actually, I used the Danvers application as my template uh, and sent it up there, and there's a letter in there from uh, the ABCC indicating that they've approved it and uh, have basically you know, uh, acknowledge that the application was in accordance with what they had required. So I'm here before you, as you, as you said, there's a requirement for public hearing for the transfer and the change of the new offices and directors. Thank you. Gardner? I have no questions. Bill? I have no questions. David? 
<clears throat> Diane? I'm all set, thank you. Okay, anybody in the public wish to say anything? No? Nope. Make a motion. To close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move oh. to accept the application as presented. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Okay. Hi, David. Hi, I don't know. I law clerk for David back, and well, <laughs> we both were a little younger back then when I was in law school, you and still he taught me everything I know. You still look younger, Al. <laughs> <laughs> you look great too, Dave. Take care. <laughs> uh, another public hearing. Okay, will be held on the application of Automatic Inc. DBA Automatic Inc. 8 Purchase Street, Thomas S. Nolan Jr. President for a Class II dealer's license at that location. Welcome, introduce yourself for the folks Hello. at home. Hi, I'm Thomas Nolan. I bought all the holdings of Gore GMC, the High Street location, uh. Riverside and Purchase Street. And I'm in the process of modernizing the facilities at the locations and wanted to have a separate corporation for the used entities. So you, what is it you're gonna do there? Just the Payment. class two dealer's license? Yeah, it's just, That's, just okay. the class two. And they're selling right now the used under just the class one at multiple locations. So okay. it's just gonna be the same business just with a separate class two for that location. Okay, Diane? And, and that's acceptable, right, class two there? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there had previously been a class two okay. Okay. license here a few years ago. That property right now is basically used for um, cars and trucks associated with the Class One dealer's license that's located on our street. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you. Thank David? You. Nothing. Thank you. Bill? I have no questions. Thank you. <coughs> no questions. Thank you. It's a public hearing. Anyone in the audience? No. Move that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Thank you. I move that we accept the application as presented. Second. Second the motion. Any discussion? <coughs> None all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Good luck. Where do I get the actual license? See Kathy Ellsworth okay. in the morning, and uh, she'll ha have it at some point in time during the day tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, good, luck. good luck. Thank you. We're moving right along. The board will consider a request to endorse a statewide effort to rename Columbus Day as Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous. Um, Mr. Town Manager. Hey, Mr. Chairman, you received um, some materials in your packets on Friday from the Human Rights and Inclusion Committee to provide a little bit of background. Um, Dijoko, the chair of the committee, is here to address the board. <coughs> And uh, I also provided uh, some <coughs> materials uh, from the chair that, that uh, he wanted to have included in the packet as well. So I think with that, um, I think that you should have a memorandum from uh, Mr. Joko as well as a copy of the uh, legislation uh, that has been proposed um, and a draft of a letter that the Human Rights and Inclusion Committee is seeking the board to support. Thank you. Welcome, D. Nice to see you again. Please introduce your committee members. Sure. Hi, I'm Jito Shinjoko. I'm the chairman of the Danvers Committee for Human Rights and Inclusion. Uh, before I introduce uh, the two people who led the subcommittee uh, on this issue, um, on the letter, on the memorandum, I think there's a typo that I want to correct. On the top uh, is the support of H3665. But the, little, the last paragraph on the letter there, I have H355. It should be 65. Sorry about that. Uh, Thank you. Yep. So without further ado, uh, I have the vice chair of the committee is here, Paul Polak. Uh, we have a member, Donna Hopkins. And I'll have uh, Bob Gamer and Bill Graham who led the subcommittee on this issue take over. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dean. Hi, I'm uh, Bob Gamer. Um, I'm a member of the Danvers uh, High School School Council, and I'm a town meeting member of Precinct 6. We come before you to make a proposal on behalf of the Danvers uh, Human Rights and Inclusion Committee that given the body of historical evidence we will introduce, 
the Board of Selectmen sign a resolution giving the Town of Danvers support to State House and Senate Bill number 3665, renaming Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, and that and the same resolution be sent to our state legislature. Historians have gathered a considerable body of evidence pointing to the horrific damage Columbus and his fellow voyagers did in the New World. Colonialist, after gold and other riches, Columbus made a tidy profit by sidelining as a slaver. <coughs> the grisly stories abound. In 1495, Columbus shipped 550 Indians back to Spain for sale as slaves. Over 200 died en route, with their bodies cast <coughs> into the sea. Thousands of Taino Indians were uprooted by Columbus from the island of Hispaniola to be sent to the Spain slave markets. The Taino left behind were forced to mine for gold or work in the plantations. The death toll was absolutely staggering. Sixty years after Columbus's arrival, only a few hundred of the original 250,000 Taino remained alive. The very reason Columbus did not attempt to convert the Taino is that by converting them, he could not sell them as slaves. It took the monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, who were certainly no angels when it came to matters relating to their blatant policies towards the native populations and seized lands under their domination. It took Ferdinand and Isabella to shine the red light to Columbus, to order Columbus to desist from slaving. However, this Monarco order did not keep Columbus from continuing to use the Indians as forced labor. The penalties for offenses defy belief in what is now the Dominican Republic. By order of Columbus, natives who rose up against colonial rule were dismembered alive and had their torsos paraded through the streets. Even in the context of the times, such cruelty had no rival. These are the facts. <coughs> the question before us is this. Is this a person, is a, is, is, the, is a person who has committed such flagrant, glaring atrocities a person we want our children to celebrate with a day off from school. In point of fact, what we need to keep in mind is that Columbus never even stepped foot in the continental America. Based on the historical evidence, it is the belief of the Danvers Human Rights and Inclusion Committee that Massachusetts should follow the example of the other states, and they are Hawaii, Florida, Alaska, South Dakota, that dropped Columbus Day from the calendar. 55 cities across the country also, these, these are not even included in those states, have also decided not to celebrate Columbus, as well as 10 universities. They are Brown, Fredonia College, University of Texas, University of Alaska, Harvard, Boise State, Columbia, Vanderbilt, Brandeis, and the University of Florida. Closing, I would like to make this statement. <coughs> Columbus Day was started at a time when Italian Americans were the victims of widespread prejudice and discrimination across our country. I believe it was started in 1869 in, in San Francisco. As every one of us should be absolutely clear, our Western culture Certainly our national culture would be damaged beyond repair without the contributions of Italians and Italian Americans. Without such iconic figures as Leonardo da Vinci, who I consider the greatest genius in the world, in art, without Dante in literature, without Verdi and Frank Sinatra in music, without Michelangelo in sculpture, without <coughs> Joe DiMaggio in baseball, to just name a few of these titans, where would we be? In no way, shape, or form should our proposal be considered to be derogatory to anyone of Italian ancestry. 
It's with this in mind that I would like to introduce someone of Italian ancestry, Deborah Gasualdo, to speak on behalf of our proposal. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Gamer. Good evening. My name is Deborah Gisualdo. I live at 34 Abington Road here in Danvers. Just to give you a little background about myself, I'm a public school educator of 17 years. I'm president of one of the largest local educator unions in the state. I'm one of the East Region Directors of the National Council of Urban Education Associations. I'm an advocate for inclusive and equitable practices, and I'm an Italian-American. I'm here tonight with the Danvers Human Rights and Inclusion Committee to talk about the need for the Board of Selectmen to support House Bill 3665. Supporting this piece of legislation could lead to the change of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. By supporting this bill, Danvers has the opportunity to do a couple of really important things. Create a sense of inclusivity and belongingness for Native peoples in our community and across the Commonwealth. And take an important step toward correcting false history and be a leader in doing so. As a white person, I don't know what it is like to walk in the shoes of our Indigenous siblings. But what I do know is that I can use my privilege to advocate for people whose land was invaded and stolen from them. This is something that we can all do. I can use my privilege as somebody who is not discriminated against just because of the color of my skin to try and make things right for those who have been treated as less than, as those who have been treated as invisible people. I know that my family who came before me would approve of this. And I know that my family here in Massachusetts all support changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. Italian Americans were long <coughs> victimized for their ethnicity, and we, as a group, cannot and should not celebrate Columbus because he was essentially responsible for the genocide of the ancestors of so many Native peoples. Today, the day after we honored the memory of the great labor organizer and civil rights activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you have the opportunity to strike back against racism, which is listed as one of the triple evils in the King philosophy, and take a step toward helping to give justice to indigenous people in Massachusetts. As Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Thank you. D, is that the end of your presentation? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. So, um, I'll open it up to uh, liaison to your committee, Mr. Mills. Yes, um, well, of course, I support the request that the committee has made, and I can report to the board that this was a very, very carefully considered proposal, which has been essentially in the works, so to speak, for four or five months, so that it is presented to the community in a way that is most healthy for the purpose of the committee and for the community. Myself, I would say we should even go beyond supporting the legislation and indeed, as a town, uh, eradicate Christopher Columbus from any mention anywhere in our schools or in our community. However, for the time being, I think this would be an excellent step forward and that people in the community can be advised of what is proposed so that they would have an opportunity to respond if they wanted to. And in the meanwhile, um, I think it is an excellent proposal, and I urge my fellow members to support it. Thank you. Sure. Diane? Um, this is a, a pretty big deal, and I, I respect David Mills for saying that he has a lot of faith in the committee. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, the poem keeps going through my head that we learned in elementary school. I'm sure you all had the same problem. So I guess my first question is, do we use it in the schools anymore? Do we, do we celebrate it or do we talk about it? Does Danvers continue to use it in October? Do, is there, what? does anybody know if the schools are still, you know, we used to have the posters up and we used to say the poem and we used to sing songs. Is that still going on? You mean as far as the curriculum? Or? Yeah, yeah, as far as the, what is it, October 12th? Is that when it that is? That I'm not sure, but I know. It's like October 12th. The kids, the kids have it off as Columbus Day. So they still have it? Still have it as Columbus Day for is the Is it day still off, a yeah. day off? Yes. Oh, I did, I, hey. <coughs> I have October 12th off whether you do or don't, so. And, 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 <laughs> and 
and just to clarify, we are, we are not trying to take the day off away from no, the No, I know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's really pretty sad to hear that he was selling um, Native Americans, and um, I don't know much about this. I have not followed this, but I think this is a very large thing, and I do support support and legislation. I do. David has um, worked with your committee. Um, I have great respect for your committee. Um, last, uh, last night I said uh, racism is taught, and here we are in the school system teaching it in our own indirect way. And so um, I learned that a long time ago. And I've always said that I never allowed it in my house once I learned that uh, it is a taught um, exercise. So I certainly don't want to be a part of that with the children. They, um, because I can tell you, like I said, that poem never leaves your head when, when you hear Columbus. And they would be singing the same thing. So I do support you on this. I, mo I support um, allowing it to go to the legislature. That's where it belongs. We, I certainly wouldn't support Danvers doing anything more. And I, I think that um, this really has to be slow and steady with the superintendent on how best <coughs> to introduce this to children. Uh, you can't walk in one day to a sixth grader and say it's over. This isn't a good man now all of a sudden. So I would really res ask that you respect the superintendent should this go through and work with her to make sure that it's introduced to our children appropriately. So thank you very much for all you do. Thank, thank you. you, Diane. Bill? Uh, when I read over your proposal and, and saw the legislation here, a couple of things struck me really fast. I'm, I'm really embarrassed by the fact that there's not one single co-sponsor of this legislation mm -hmm. from Essex County. I think that our local re representatives and senators really have let us down in this case. Also, I, I'm astounded that, you know, I was never, I, I, I minored in history and I was never, never taught this kind of stuff when I was in school. Taught U.S. history for a couple of years in Danvers and we were, it was never part of the curriculum that we had there. But I think it's vastly long overdue. It's going to be kind of hard to wrap around the last weekend of the Topsfield Fair and this indigenous uh, people's day, but I think that it's, it's, it's definitely something we should be doing. It, yeah, it, it's politically correct, but it's also morally and socially correct. And I, I think it's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Gardner? Um, I'm in support of, of the board signing a letter asking the state to endorse this. There's nothing in here about the local curriculum. I'm not going to comment on that. That's not what's being asked of us. Um, we're being asked to support and ask that the legislature move this out of committee for favorable recommendation. I'll support that. Thank you. Thank you. So, <coughs> Dean, when we spoke a few months ago about this, it got me to thinking and I uh, did a little research and I've shared the information. The International Day of World Indigenous People Day is August 9th, as declared by the United Nations. Native American Day is a civil holiday in many states and is a state holiday in Maryland and is celebrated the fourth Friday in September. There are also 21 other Native American Indian celebrations throughout the country given the time of year, the month. We have many phases of the full moon that are referenced to an Indian celebration. So my thought was we have two worldwide or, or worldwide and a civil holiday for Indigenous Day, how do we justify three? We've got October 9th, the fourth Friday in September, and now you want to do the second Monday in October. But then when I did the research, and <clears throat> what you say about Columbus <coughs> was not a surprise to me. I was aware of the atrocities, but never That's in right. depth, because it was never Thank taught you. to us, and I never read a book on Columbus and his bad habits, if you will. I certainly agree that we need to support you and your efforts, but are you going far enough? Shouldn't we ask the state to be a leader and abolish any reference to the second Monday in October as a holiday? Because we should 
disavow to the best of our ability <coughs> Columbus. Unfortunately, I do have a problem with we're going to ignore the man that had the gumption to sail west to find the east. And when you think about that, that was quite an endeavor back th in those days. But given what happened once he landed here, I fully support doing something. Is it enough just to support the changing of the name is what I can't answer for myself. So I don't know that you have any re response to that, but. Well, maybe not, um, but one doesn't exclude the other. So <coughs> the, the fact that we asking for the change of the name does not exclude the fact that there could be other things uh, in the future. But we felt strongly that taking a day off to support someone with this kind of historical evidence was important. And, and there's also this, some people say, well, we can't get, get rid of the history. Well, we just want to learn the right history and the correct history. So I, I don't have an answer for you. I don't think we're going far enough to take away any reference to Columbus. It will always be known formally as Columbus Day uh, by doing what we're doing, okay. or what, what you're asking. Okay. I think I Paul think might have something to offer. Chair might have here. something. Stay right here. <laughs> I think you've asked me a very difficult question. I'm, Introduce I'm, yourself. Paul Pollack. Thank uh, you. Um, whatever a vice chair is, that's what I have. <laughs> if he doesn't show up, I, I sort of try to run the meeting. Is that the responsibility of the state? In other words, what you're suggesting, Dan. Uh, it is. They, they brought it up. We're, we, I'm like Diane. I used to, we used to sing this song. It was like, and now I'm at the age of, first of all, the ocean blue. Come on. You know, I can sing it for you right now. It's ridiculous. Well, it's, it went through my head quickly. Right. Right. Yeah. No. 1492, uh, Columbus sailed. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. He didn't see blue until he hit the Caribbean. And it is true. He never stepped foot on what we know as America. And number three, to my wonderful Italian-American, you know, he, was, he was from Genoa. Italy wasn't made a formal country until 1861. Right. So we're dealing with a lot of myths. And I think what we should do, and I think this is why the committee went this way, because we, we can't stand, we can't live with it anymore in our own minds, number one. Number two, we're asking your support, and then we'll sort of let the state sort it out, <coughs> what it will be and what it won't be. I don't think anybody's suggesting we don't have a day off or a holiday, but we can find some other vessel. God knows we have enough of them in this state for holidays, period. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So, for the folks at home, I'm going to read House Bill number 3665 by Mr. Lewis of Framingham, a petition accompanied by Bill House number 3665 of Jack Patrick Lewis and others for the issuance of an annual proclamation by the governor to designate the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day, state administration and regulatory oversight the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, an act establishing an Indigenous People Day, be it enacted by the Senate and House Representatives and the General Court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Chapter 6 of the General Laws is hereby amended by striking out Section 12V and inserting in place thereof the following section. Section 12V. The Governor shall annually issue a proclamation setting apart the second Monday in October as Indigenous People Day and recommending that it be observed by the people with appropriate exercises in the school and otherwise. To acknowledge the history of genocide and <coughs> discrimination against indigenous people and to recognize and celebrate the thriving cultures and continued resistance and res resilience of di indigenous people and their tribal nations. Pretty cut and dry. <coughs> um, not hard to get behind, but I kind of heard we need to let the community digest this. 
do we want the community to digest it before we act, or do we act and send a letter to the appropriate people um, asking them to pass this this year? I don't know where <coughs> this bill lies at the moment, what committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I'm going to make a motion that we accept, I'm looking for it here, uh, that we accept that we endorse a statewide effort to rename Columbus Day as Indigenous Day, People's Day, um, and we forward a letter supporting House, was it three? I got two. 3665. 3665. Second the motion. So at this point, uh, we've heard from some members here, <coughs> anybody in the audience that would like to make a comment. Is it a public hearing? Bill Bradstreet, town meeting member, precinct one. I brought this up last year, and just I'm very thankful it's finally something. Oh, sorry, being done. I couldn't hear you. I Bill was ahead of us on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't ahead. I was with the movement. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And hi, my name is Ann Gamer, and as I was sitting here. Um, I thought to myself yesterday, at, I had lunch with my grandsons, and I asked them, why do, you have, why do you have today off? And they said, because it's Martin Luther King Day. And I said, and what do you know about Martin Luther King? And they went on to describe, these are my kindergarten and second graders, and they were very eloquent in their descriptions about how important Martin Luther King is in their lives. And it just occurred to me, I don't think I could do that on Columbus Day. I don't think I could say to them, why do you have today off? And, and, um, and, and believe that they would really know the true history of Columbus. So I totally uh, support your support of what the state's trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion from members of the board? May I comment? Yes, you may, please. <clears throat> I, uh, I feel that the board is going to approve this, and I'm so happy. It doesn't mean that the committee, <clears throat> this is a very, very, while the inclusion committee is a small group, let me tell you, they are not a silent group. And six months from now, they may choose to bring a further petition directly to the town, that the town should act to delete Columbus from anything within the town of Danvers, notwithstanding what the legislature did. But I agree with the chairman, <coughs> someone, this is a healthy way of introducing the notion to the town of Danvers people, and I think the committee's done a great job of putting this together. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody have a comment? <coughs> well, we have a motion to support the request to write to somebody to support House 3665. Is that correct, Diane? 3665. Yep. So but that's your motion, to write a letter from the board? Right. Just as it was put on the agenda. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Bob and Ann and your fellow members for coming tonight, explaining the situation. You guys can take tomorrow off from the town. <laughs> they had yesterday. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but I guess what's the next step is what I would ask you to think about, okay, because we need to explain why we're doing this once the state passes it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank <coughs> you, Paul. For Diane's benefit, may I share one other historical fact? You talked about the song, the 1492. I still, now it's that going to my head again. That was also the year that the Spanish Inquisition kicked all the Jews out of Spain, 1492. <coughs> I'm going back to Mrs. Weenstone in the second grade and going to tell her everything she told me was a lie. <laughs> <coughs> Nice to have you here, Lucia. 
Number 10, the board will consider the application of First Ipswich Bank 107 High Street, Rich Ellington Manager for a one-day wine and malt beverage license on Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020, 5 to 7 p.m. for a North Shore Chamber business after hours event at that location. Mr. Rich Ellington, would you please go to the microphone and introduce yourself for the folks at home. Uh, my name is Rich Ellington with First Sip Twitch Bank. We are applying for a one-day liquor permit for tomorrow, January 22nd, <coughs> at the North Shore Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours. Uh, we're sorry for the last minute application, but there was some confusion if we needed a license or a permit or if the bartender was gonna get it. It's gonna be held at our Danvers Branch, 107 High Street. It's gonna go from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, we've hired two security detail. I'll be there from 4 to 8. Uh, this is an invitation only event. It's not open to the general public. There will be no charge. Uh, there's going to be food, wine, and beer, hopefully. Uh, the bartender is George from North Shore Bartending based out of Salem, Mass. They are TIP certified. We have liability insurance for the event, and the wholesaler is Cappy's Liquors. Is everything in order, Mr. Clerk? Mr. Chairman, everything is in order. Did you get the check? <laughs> We have cash. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Gardner? No questions, thank you. Bill? No questions. Diane? Yeah, you know, Glenn Bucci must have been in charge of this. That's why it's all messed up. <laughs> 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 thank you, I'm all set. David? Nothing, thank you, Dan. Okay. And this is not a public hearing. What's the will of the board? Move the, board. the application as presented. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good Thank luck, you. Rich. Enjoy your private event. Okay. Uh, the town manager will report to the board on various items of interest. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few updates for you tonight. Um, I'll reference a couple of the documents that you received in your packets. The first was a very detailed and very thorough uh, memorandum that went out last week uh, to uh, employees and retirees related to the health care changes. Uh, that we've been talking about for some time now. And um, I'm, I'm very pleased that Assistant Town Manager Jen Breaker hasn't left for the night yet because she is our in-house expert on health insurance. Um, I just wanted you to see uh, this. It, 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 it gives uh, a view of sort of the, the level of detail, um, the complexity of what we're trying to do. The very last page, I think, is instructive. It includes the education uh, seminars and events that have been scheduled between now um, and April. Um, we've, we've put this material into, into all of our members' hands, and Jen and her staff have made themselves available to answer questions. Um, and, and I'm hoping that by the end of the nearly, you know, a dozen uh, sessions that we have, people will be able to get all of their questions answered. We will be extending our open enrollment period this year to ensure that people have ample time uh, to, to determine which plan is best for them. Um, but I wanted to share this, and I, I think either Jen or I would be happy to try to answer any questions about the process. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll speak um, about this in greater detail during the budget process that will start uh, in a few weeks. Hearing, <coughs> hearing no questions, I will move on to uh, <coughs> the next item. You received a, uh, a second quarter report uh, from the uh, finance director. Um, uh, this is something we, we report out three times a year. We generally don't report out after the first quarter because it's it's really, frankly, too early in the year. Um, quarter two is the first quarter where we start to look at some of the, I mean, we're looking at this each month, but we can report out some of the trends as they start to emerge. Um, there aren't any surprises on this report. Uh, everything is trending where we would expect. Um, on the expenditure side, two areas that we're monitoring early this year are fire overtime. We've had a spate of injuries in the fire department and some of our special ed uh, costs for out of district placements um, are high and that's likely something that we'll have to visit during the budget process uh, for the Maytown meeting. Um, if you have any questions about the items on here, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, but as I said, I think mo any of the deviations at this point are just timing issues. We often uh, uh, make payments or receive revenues late in the year that skew the trend uh, until we get to the final quarter. Uh, I do have a question. On the column fiscal year 20, FY20 budget, is that reflective of two quarters or all four quarters? That's the full year. So if I look at some of these numbers like retirement, we've expended the full year's retirement budget 
in Q2. By Q, by but that transfer is made once. Yes. Yeah. So okay, well, and yep. that's fine. I'm yep. just, but yep. I was trying to reconcile, and that's a good answer to that. Yeah, that's correct. Because um, if everything was fair and even, you'd expect everything to be about 50%, plus or minus a little bit. And some of them I'm seeing uh, we're way ahead on investment income right now. Um, and why didn't we put a cannabis impact fee in the budget as expected revenue? The, the, the company um, opened up just within the last year. So we weren't comfortable at this point last year including it as a general fund revenue. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the revenues this year are going to fall to free cash without any expenditure offset for the budget that we're preparing for March 1st. We will be introducing that as part of the local receipts. Is that a one-time payment, or do we expect that to increase? The, um, that's a good question. There is a, an agreement, a host agreement between the town and the company that indicates what the fees would look like uh, moving forward. So this is not a one-time payment. Um, but there's also, as, as you all know, been a lot of activity at the Cannabis Control Commission um, related to host agreements. Uh, we have a plan right now to sit down um, during the summer with the operators uh, to review their first year to see how they're doing um, and compare uh, their actual business and sales to what was agreed to in the host agreement. So at this point, we assume that the agreement will, stay, um, will be a moving forward revenue line item. Thank you. Yeah, and if I may, the clerk might have something to offer on the retirement. Sure. On that retirement payment, PEREC requ requires payment up front. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? So, uh, if I I'm... Just, have, <coughs> just um, explain to me why you made a note on the building permits at 224000 Is there a reason you made that note? Are we... It's the largest component of that. Uh, there are other revenues in license and permits other than yeah. permit fees, so we, we sort of track that separately because it is the largest component. So are we? So you're you're not saying that we're not on track? We're trending. We're, we're we may be a little bit behind where we were year to date a year ago, but but not materially. Okay. That's a note that Rodney includes in his report just to just to track that separately. Yeah, <laughs> and on the medical marijuana now, I, I read in the newspaper that there's been some problem with host agreements and what have you, and I don't know where the attorney general or whoever has the problem with that is. Is it just recreational mar marijuana that they're having a problem with the host or medical too? So the, when, the, when the legislature um, wrestled with this question, the, the, deter the legislature's direction to towns and cities was that in order to operate, you needed to have a, a letter of support or non-opposition from a community and, a, uh, and, the, and the town had a right to enter into a host agreement. Um, the, my, I wasn't here at that time, but my understanding is that the MMA and, and others uh, were more supportive of the legislature determining broad rules that would apply across the board. And I think what you saw, um, I think Fall River is a good example of that. There was quite a bit of press this past year um, about the way the mayor was negotiating those host agreements, and it led to um, frankly, I think it launched uh, a pretty extensive investigation by the AG's office into how these were negotiated. I know Salem um, was dragged. So I, I don't believe it's just, it's not just recreational or medical. Um, it, it could be either. So do you think we should be monitoring, um, because I, I think it was something like 200000 a year or something, cra there was some crazy amount of money that we're supposed to be expecting over time. And um, do you think, or, or can, should you be monitoring whether or not we should actually move that into some other fund to hold if, you, if there's legislation or if there's any legal action going on. I'd hate to expend money that we, we knowingly think that there's a problem that we might have to give back. So th the short answer is we don't, I think we don't know how, what may happen in the future, but the, um, the, the guidance that was put out by the, uh, the commission of the AG's office, our agreement is, can, is complying with everything that was, okay. was listed there. So we're below any of the thresholds that were listed as caps for some of these agreements. Um, and I, I have to believe that if, if at some point either the commission or uh, the legislature acting on behalf of the commission were to, were to pass legislation changing the way these agreements would work, there would be a hold harmless for, for payments made today. Right. So I think there's just something that I'm going to ask that be monitored. And I, I think to, you know, four years from now say, now we've got another problem, a half a million dollars to add to our retirement problem and everything else. So. Thank we, you. So the August will mark the first year of operation, and so we, we do plan to sit in June or July with the operator, the, mm -hmm. the CEO and the operators, to just to review their first year of experience in the Amherst and, and 
check in with them. Well, I want their money, but you know, I, I also, I don't want to give it back, but thank you. Mm -hmm. So to that point, that 50,000 just going into the general fund? These are general fund revenues. Yeah. Well, we're hopeful that it'll be over and above. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make yes. a comment to this. So please. I just, I'm just, uh, I want to highlight the fact that one of the outliers in the uh, revenue area is uh, hotel motel tax, which is almost 70 percent of what would normally be expected. And I think people should realize that uh, hotel motel tax is one of the, I call them clean taxes. They're not taxes that are paid necessarily by residents of Danvers. They help to support our services, and it's out of the pass-through population. It stays here briefly, gets a cup of coffee, a meal somewhere, but they're paying their uh, nightly fees at the hotel. We're not Las Vegas, but we certainly got a good start on making a nice little million and a half dollars in this area. And it's good to see that it's well above what the projected revenue stream would be. Well, to add to that, um, Dan's going to love this comment, but at my, I told you my last tax seminar was about the Airbnb and the state has a tax on it. And just like they allow with the meals tax, the local can add to it. And I made comment that that should be my goodbye present to bring that up. but. Again, it's, it's what I said about the meals tax and you're saying. It's for people that don't even live here. So the same thing with the Airbnb. It's for people that don't live here would be paying it. So anyways. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Next. I'll just uh, report out briefly. The, the Finance Committee met um, on January 14th. Several of the selectmen attended the meeting. Um, and they they moved the proposed zoning forward uh, by a vote of seven to one with one small amendment. Um, they made an amendment that was supported to uh, exempt single within these districts any single family home um, that is uh, becoming a two family. So any existing single family home that is adding a second unit uh, would be exempt from the affordable housing uh, payment for that first unit. Um, a second residential unit. The second that that goes from one to two. Residential. Yep. That first added unit would be exempt from the affordable housing payment mm -hmm. under the proposed zoning language that was um, widely supported by the finance committee. Uh, otherwise, it was approved as as presented. <coughs> and on that note, uh, it's mentioned here under the notes and reminders. But we have a we have a workshop scheduled for Saturday, this February first. Um, invitations went out to all of our town meeting members with their warrants and explanations this past week. Um, it'll be held in this room. Um, we're, was, we, we did this for the December 2017 special town meeting and we went till around noon. Uh, so it's, a, it's a really nice forum for town meeting members to come and engage informally with planning staff. I will be there. The building inspector will be there. Uh, Ted Brovitz, who has who has been an, an invaluable resource to the community um, for years on our planning and zoning updates, will be there. Um, we'll have some light refreshments. There will be a, a presentation made at some point during the morning. But it's really a chance for town meeting members to ask questions uh, directly of the experts, um, so that when they get to the town meeting on February 10th, um, hopefully we've been able to answer their questions. Um, you know, again, whether they support the proposal or. Um, do not support the proposal. Our hope is that they'll come and get get information from the source, and we'll be able to um, help them uh, form their opinion. Okay, thank you. And the, I would mention just briefly, you received, uh, I believe, you received it today. But uh, Town Engineer Stephen King provided a memorandum uh, mm -hmm. to me and David Lane. Um, we've completed our uh, exploratory well testing at the Rebecca Nurse Homestead. Um, unfortunately, there were kind of three criteria that we're going to need to, that, that we needed to be met in order to uh, pursue a municipal well site there. Those were uh, flow, water quality, and permitting. And going in uh, to this testing cycle, we, we sort of knew that permitting was going to be the toughest of the three, uh, and it, because it's no easy task to get a new water source permitted at the DEP. Um, but the flow is slightly less once the test sites were in than we had hoped for. And um, we found um, iron manganese and trace amounts of, of PFA uh, in the source. So uh, as you'll know, if you, if you want to jump right to the spoiler at the end of the memo, um, we, we, we shared this memo today with uh, the Danvers Alarm List. I would um, be remiss if I didn't note that they were um, 
terrific partners. We approached them about a year ago and, and indicated to them that some of the um, geologic uh, information indicated there could be water and they were more than happy to partner with the town. So we've completed the testing. We'll be going in the spring to do complete restoration of the property um, and we'll be meeting later this week to talk about some other sites that we may want to do some exploratory testing within the North Coastal Basin, which is key because uh, most of our water comes from the Ipswich, Ipswich Basin. Um, and if we could supplement our supply from the North Coastal Basin, that would be a big win for the uh, for the water system. And that's all that I wanted to report on, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. In our packet, we received a letter from Beverly Bank about their moving locations. And they're moving from 29 Elm Street to, um, to 48 Elm Street. 29 Elm Street is that property um, and I guess I, I'm asking for a refresher from the town manager, and he doesn't have to do it tonight, but we had utilized part of that parking lot, or allowed them to utilize part of the parking lot for parking and drive-through use. For the employees? What's that? For employees and... But also for drive-through, <laughs> for parking for bank business and... Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what, what was the... I'm, a, I'm asking through you to the town manager. What was the... Um, conveyance of that property was it the town still owes it and we're letting the business use it did we sell or deed it to that building and if that building gets sold is the expectation that that part of the parking lot that we carved off is going to go with the new building or business that might occupy that building the the town <coughs> I, can, I can speak to part of that that um, a presentation was made before this board and a license was granted to uh, the business so it was not there was no deed or transfer of ownership or interest in the property mm -hmm. um, it was a license to the business um, and in exchange for the license a mod, uh, several thousand dollars were being five thousand being I'm getting a hand signal from the town clerk it was five thousand dollars a year um, to go toward the upkeep of the parking lot including eventually the, the you know repaving and relining but certainly the snow operation so um, we don't have much more information than what's included in that letter at this point. At some point, we'll need to speak to the bank to find out what their what their intent is with the building, um, and we'll probably need counsel to weigh in as well in terms. Of, but my understanding is that those rights would dissolve um, with the use. But we'll, we can report back with more details. I was just wondering. I yep. couldn't remember the particulars. Thank you. Everybody all set. Um, board will consider the consent calendar items as they appear below. And will we accept? Um, Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Dan. New Dan. business? Yes. The, 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 on the selectman's notes, 7.30 is stated as the, uh, is that a, a typo? typo. Next selectman. Next selectman. Oh, thank you. That would be 7 o'clock. Yes. We're in town meeting thank mode. You. We'll get that corrected. Yep. Thank you. And the town meeting is 7? 730. 7.30, okay. town meeting. And the special Six, meeting is? 6.30. 6.30, okay, February 6th. And then 9 to noon, okay. Yep, and they close Monday, February 17th for President's Day. I hope it was President's Day. Is there anything wrong? Not allowed to say Washington. It said President's, yep. Selectman's New business, previous new business correspondence. David, you'd like to start? Nothing, thank you. Thank you. Bill? The only thing I'd like to say is that we have a very nice looking town report that's been put out this year. It's a pleasure to see that the town administration is, again, after many, many years, trying to do a nice job with the annual report, not just giving us a mimeograph <laughs> sheet. Um, and maybe it'll win some accolades at MMA at some point in time. But a very good. Uh, report except for one picture and we won't go over that well i will note we did win the award we were uh, we were honored we were noted last year at the mma annual meeting for our presentation and you've you've opened the door so i'm going to walk through it and 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 uh, note that sharon clement gail bernard and ann freitas uh, put in a tremendous amount of work uh, in putting this report together each year um, certainly each department and and our major committees contribute their narratives uh, but the work that goes into the preparing this is a, is a large undertaking. They do a, a great job. And we will forever refer to it as the award-winning annual town report. There you go. <laughs> What's that, Bill? Yep. Diane? Um, just to go over some of the um, new town business, I, I want to thank the town meeting member from Precinct 4. I didn't catch his name. 
but um, truly loved that he came in and um, as a town meeting member and recognized a problem. I wish we saw more of that. I know at the Finance Committee, I was thrilled to see new faces of town meeting members there, and I thanked each and every one of them for at least coming, whether they agree with me or not, in um, getting the correct answers. So I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting really happy. Our town meeting members seem to be showing up more. Um, and I agree with him, you know, that that's something to look into. And, and town manager, I hope you report back to us on that. Um, we certainly don't want to have little holes in the street. And if, the, if our construction people are getting sloppy, we need to pull that in. Um, the the uh, gentleman, Mr. M M Milm, M Milm, he, um, he had called, I think, back in November. And I want to thank the town manager for um, taking, you know, setting up time with him as he had requested. Um, that is an eyesore. I know that um, our, our building inspector is a rules man, and he had looked at it. He went out. He's done everything he can do within his regulation, <coughs> um, but there's no doubt there's an eyesore. You can't just change it because there's other issues, as he will explain to us. I'm not going to get into it. But if you get a chance to ride by, by that, um, I certainly wouldn't want to be looking out my front door every morning and seeing that. Um, it's just but the people aren't doing anything uh, wrong at this point. So um, I want to thank, them, thank um, everybody for staying on that. And I really am glad somebody came in. The other thing is, in my packet, I don't know if I brought it. Um, oh, Mass Municipal Selectmen. I, I wish I could go to this association, has come up with something. And even though I am never offended when I'm called a selectman, I am perfectly comfortable. I will say this, mostly men have a hard time because they want to be respectful. 99% of all men are, are really great people. I always say that. And they really struggle with what to call me. And I, I watch them stumble at things because they're trying to be respectful. And so the MMA for selectmen has come up with changing everything to select board, select board members. And it's just something I think maybe down the road um, you might want to do, um, like I said, I am never offended, but um, I can see where people stumble with it. Um, when I'm introduced somewhere, it takes four titles to finally say, what do you want to be called? So, you know, I, I just think that that was, you know, select, the Selectmen's Association's doing it, and uh, maybe it's something to look at. So, thank that's you. it for me. Great, thank you. Gardner. I have nothing, thank you. Thank you. I have been saying select board for the last year or two. Yeah, yeah. A um, couple of things on the opening the streets, and you'll find out do we have a requirement for them to come back? after the winter to fill in where it's settled. And that's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. They patch, it settles. It's, it's the nature of you dig a hole, you gotta tamp it down, it's still gonna settle. So do we have a requirement? Um, and I could articulate specifically what Stephen King has been working on since he got here is that um, the, the worst outcome is when a, when a town or city has a regulation that only requires, say, a two-foot trench. I mean, the contractors would like to come in and cut just enough pavement to get their infrastructure in the ground, um, but that creates essentially unintended speed bumps. And so um, we had a policy in the town I came from where uh, it was a minimum of something like 12 feet of pavement curb to curb. So you couldn't even do, but it was, it was extensive. And the idea is that you, the, the wider the patch, the smoother. But I, I would let that's a little, yeah, like that's that a little onerous. speak to what yeah. he's been working okay, on. Okay, great. Be but happy to hear right. that. Settling is the big is the, right. the problem in the winter months. Um, a f longtime friend from Marblehead is on the diversity committee there, and she was asking me about our diversity committee. I really couldn't give her an answer, and then it kind of dawned on we don't have a diversity committee that I'm aware of, and what happened to them? That's the inclusion committee. Um, I'm sorry, not diversity, disability. Excuse me for confusing the terms. Disability. We did have one at one time. It's, did we it, not? No, we did. It's, it's still on the books. It's been fairly dormant for some time. Right. I think it was one of the many committees that Stu Susan Fletcher worked on. Um, we can report out in terms of. I'm just curious. I mean, yeah. I knew it was inactive. That's the only answer I could give her. But did it get absorbed by land use and human services? <coughs> I can report back. I don't, yeah, I don't it, have an answer. I'm just I curious. Okay. Not diversity, disability. Thank you. Um, I had a call today from uh, one of our 
constituents telling me that he's spoken to the manager at Dollar Tree stores twice about them using plastic bags. About what then? Using plastic bags at the Dollar Tree store, and he spoke to the manager, so if the manager says he doesn't know anything about it, that's not true. And I can't really think, um, we've got MMA meeting this weekend coming up. Anybody going? That's okay. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, I bummed a ride with the town manager for Saturday. <laughs> oh, I feel guilty. <laughs> so I'll get to vote on the select I board. know. I wanted to go to this. Yeah. I, I read that just today, but thank you. Um, that's all I have. Um, a short week, but we'll get things going. Um, I had an earache for two days, so I chose not to go and cough on everybody. Okay. Um, but, but I heard, from, I read in the paper that it was very well done. What? MLK Day. Oh, very well. Good, good. Thank you. All right. With that, can we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, thank you very much. My um, earache is still causing me to be dizzy. Please, let's remember the veterans out there. Uh, things are nuts in the world. Um, remember the vets, thank the vets, and think of the vets overseas. Thank you. Dan, may I also make a comment? Yes. Um, I would like to ask also that people acknowledge the work of uh, judges throughout the United States, particularly United States judges, clerks, and other personnel who are absolutely <laughs> deluged with work at this time and are attempting to do their jobs in the face of enormous controversy. And also the hundreds of thousands of other good public employees who carry on the business of government no matter what is going on at the top and hopefully can secure um, you know, a functional government for all of us, notwithstanding. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, David. And I think um, going forward, if you want to bring that up under your time to make co comments would be appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Will we turn? Yep. Please. We have a motion. Move Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.